Hello, ma'am. How are you? Hi, Hi ma'am. Hi. You can call me Dimple. No, ma'am. Okay. No. Uh, I would be like I'll feel better if I call you ma'am. So sweet. So sweet. How are you, Ratika? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Thank you. So, ma'am, I would like to introduce you to my audience, like the ones who don't know you. So guys uh this is Dimple ma'am uh, she is an ayurvedic health coach and she is also a celebrity coach and uh, she is a founder of prana and she is also a tedx speaker uh, am i right thank you that's right <laughs> so i'm really very very excited to talk to you today and um, and the ones who don't know me hi i'm ruchika and i am a ayurvedic student i am in my third year and yeah really nice to connect with you yes yeah, same year same year so ma'am uh, today's topic is intermittent fasting uh so as you know that you know these days everybody is uh, like doing intermittent fasting and everything and it's all over the internet so i just want to know like what actually intermittent fasting is so you know what uh in um most religions like jainism hindu hinduism buddhism they call it ratri bhojan ka tyag it means okay not eating after sunset it's simply yeah. following the rules of nature waking up okay. with the sun setting with the sun when the sun rises you start consuming herbal teas spice teas some fruits some cooked foods you have the biggest meal in the afternoon when the sun is at the peak when the sun is about to set just before that you finish your dinner and you do not eat food after sunset from sunset to sunrise you don't consume food that's called ratri bhojan ka tyag in many religions and now okay. it is called intermittent fasting in the modern day world so yes yes it yes. is doing what all the animals and birds are doing you see birds they stop eating at sunset you don't see birds yeah. looking for food after sunset they go back to their nest and they rest yeah 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 and sunrise they're the first ones to wake up and they start chirping and waking up all of the birds saying okay the early bird gets the worm wake up wake up wake up yeah 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 that's right just like how birds and animals stop eating food after sunset we are also part of nature we are made of nature we are born from nature made of the five elements earth water fire air space and when we die also we go back to the five elements we can't take any yeah. into our next journey so if our birth and death is marked by the rules of nature then our life should also be marked by the rules of nature which means we should follow the position of the sun the circadian rhythm of the sun we should follow the movement of earth around the sun that is seasonal rhythm yeah that's right it's called dinner yeah. chart to chari and ayurveda yeah 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 that's, that's right so ma'am what is yeah what's the like uh, time uh, difference like when we can have food there is some hours right yeah so people are doing this mistake of intermittent fasting wherein uh, they eat till 10 in the night 11 in the night they have the last dinner because they're waiting for their husband or waiting for the wife whatever the reason you know or they having late night socializing events and dinners and all that uh i'm just reading the comments sorry Arjun, okay yeah yeah sure yeah you can read out the questions later so now uh, what we can do is like uh, like uh, in the end we, like uh, like just before 5 minutes we can just take all the questions Sure, sure. So what happens is, uh, most people are starting the dinner itself at around ten thirty, nine thirty, eleven o'clock. Sometimes they finish it very late, and then they start intermittent fasting at twelve o'clock, and they don't eat any food till the next day, twelve o'clock. That's wrong. Don't do that. Yeah, that's very wrong. Intermittent fasting yeah. means not eating food after sunset and giving your body a break for twelve hours. It's called the state of catabolism. Okay, catabolism okay. is the state where the body starts breaking down complex molecules. The body keeps breaking down complex cells, which are very difficult, and complex foods, which are very difficult to digest. It starts breaking down and starts releasing what it doesn't want. Hmm. Okay. The state of catabolism is an outward movement. Everything moves out: sweat, urine, feces. They all get ready for evacuation. 
okay the okay state of anabolism is a state of feeding where we nourish our body mind and soul where we eating food when we eating we are in a state of anabolism everything is moving inwards the energy is moving or the prana is moving inwards okay You're right try right. so the best time to be in a state of anabolism or to consume food is when there is a metabolic fire in your stomach and the metabolic fire yeah. in your stomach direct, directly corresponds to the position of the sun so when the sun rises your metabolic fire starts rising and the sun is at the peak your metabolic fire is at the peak then the sun starts setting your metabolic fire also starts setting after sunset there is no metabolic fire it's like your chula yeah your kitchen ka chula yeah right in yeah, the yeah, yeah. cooking first it's a dim right it's like on a low flame then you increase it to a high flame right mm. so based on the flame you cook food right the same rule applies to your stomach based on how much flame there is there in your stomach the metabolic fire of the agni you must eat food yeah. in the morning when you wake up the agni is very small is just waking right. up with the position of the sun and the agni is probably this high based on the position of the sun in the afternoon the agni is this high at 12 in the afternoon so what do i do in the morning i should have a small meal lot of herbal teas and spice teas to stimulate that agni okay you know in the olden days when they used to start a chula in the morning how do they start the chula they will slowly stimulate it by blowing into it right and add yeah, yeah, yeah. twigs some uh, leaves and then they would add the big log of fire and at mm-hmm. night they put some water onto the chula saying that today we're done closing the chula okay? yes so the same rule applies yes. for stomach in the morning when we wake up we must have 200 ml of warm water to flush the toxins downwards and then we should have some herbal and spice teas made with herbs and spices that's available in the kitchen like cinnamon cardamom clove grated ginger pepper star anise uh, cin- uh cumin seeds fennel seeds coriander seeds um what else is that turmeric lemon fenugreek these are all herbs and spices available in the kitchen you don't even have to go too far you should boil some of these herbs and spices not all some based on what your body needs make a herbal tea spice tea drink what does that do that stimulates the agni in the stomach now the agni is okay. going up once agni starts going the first food solid food you should eat is fruits fruit first okay what happens when hmm. i eat fruits first it enhances the gut flora it's like enhancing okay. the gut bacteria okay okay the gut flora gets enhanced and then in the afternoon i have a plate of salad again you know salad is like uh, not dry salad raw salad steamed salad salad is like the dry leaves you put inside a campfire when you have a campfire mm-hmm. you put dry leaves in it right first yeah 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 yeah, yeah 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 so good you put first put dry leaves then you put twigs then you put big logs of wood so the dry leaves yes is like salad for us vegetable salad okay so at 12 in the afternoon when you eat a bowl of steamed salads vegetable salads it's roughage it has some dryness but we've steamed it so that it's not too dry mm. okay and also we've steamed it to kill all the parasites that live in it correct all the parasites and virus also live in vegetables and fruits right so it helps in killing it yes. so when we eat a bowl of steamed salads it stimulates the agni again saying okay time for lunch yeah yeah and yeah. then the lunch should be the biggest meal you should have yes that's the like uh, a big mistake we all have been doing since like uh, we have been like kids because we've been told that uh, just like breakfast it, we should eat breakfast it should be our like heaviest meal so that's what i guess we're doing the wrong way exactly we've done a lot of mistakes like eating a big breakfast then a medium lunch and then a small dinner which is fine but eating after sunset is wrong eating a big breakfast is wrong it's like you know <clears throat> visualize you have a little boy a little child sleeping you won't wake up the child and give it 20 kg bag and say go to school right you'll first yeah. start with love with kindness with affection smother him or her with kisses and hugs then you'll give them milk to drink then you'll send them for a bath then you'll give them some breakfast to eat nourish the body then you'll give them a bag this 20 kg bag thing yeah if you eat a big yeah. breakfast first thing when you wake up in the morning it's like dumping food into your stomach it just sits uh that's a big mistake we do we shouldn't do that instead we should slowly wake up our stomach by drinking herbal spice teas then have some raw fruits then some breakfast then some salad at 12 in the afternoon then a big lunch at 1 o'clock then after lunch also we must have something called a buttermilk or a, a black coffee or you know some kind of a herbal tea with you know cumin seeds and carom seeds and fennel seeds what does it do it stimulates the digestion okay and then okay. we have a bowl of fruits again at 4 o'clock in the evening why because the sun is setting we need to enhance our gut flora and eat a healthy snack 
So fruits is a better. So, ma'am, like, like if you talk about like what I have read and I've seen on the internet, it's like uh, there is this sixteen-hour time you shouldn't eat anything, and but you should have like all three meals: breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right? And so, ma'am, what are uh, what sh should we actually eat? in breakfast lunch and dinner like shouldn't we eat of uh, uh, carbohydrates or fats or something like we should skip uh, skip something or like we should have everything so i'll I, you know this is the best routine that has worked for all my patients and i tell you from experience we've treated about 2100 patients and we have 2000 students 4000 this is the one formula that has worked for everyone when you wake up in the morning the first thing like i said herbal teas and spice teas before that you take 200 ml of warm water Okay, you flush the toxins down. Then herbal teas and spice teas to stimulate the agni. Then fruits. After fruits, give one hour break and then have breakfast. Breakfast can be savory because fruits are sweet in taste. We just had something sweet. Yeah. Breakfast, it's good to have some carbs. Now, when I say carbs, it's not wheat, rice, and pasta. When I say carbs, it means something like moong dal ka chilra. A little bit of protein and carbs in breakfast is good. Okay. okay. You can't have vegetables in the morning. It's not advisable to eat vegetables in the morning because vegetables require a lot of energy and metabolic fire to digest. So after having fruits, the best breakfast is a porridge. A porridge is called dalia in India. It's called porridge yeah. in Europe. Okay, it's pretty yeah. much the same formula. You take any grain, makhi ka dalia, which is corn husk, uh, gehu ka dalia, which is wheat. Then you can take moong dal chilra, moong dal khichdi, uh, besan ka chilra. You can take mm. uh, oats. You can take uh, cereals, yeah. muesli. These are all porridge. They're all single grain. So the trick is, yeah, you have one grain. You can even have pancakes for breakfast with blueberry jam. Okay. Even that's a uh -huh. great breakfast. Very healthy. A uh, whole wheat pancake okay. is very healthy for breakfast for pitta prakriti. So you have one grain for breakfast, and you add some sweetener to it, if you like. Or you can make it savory if you have a tendency for spicy taste in the morning. Okay. Some people will have oats which is sweetened. Some people will have oats with salt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trick is, trick is during breakfast don't mix fruits with grains. It becomes poisonous. It becomes toxic when you mix it. Okay. And don't mix grains with milk. And don't mix hmm. fruits with milk also. That's a big mistake that they do. It's yeah, called it's, ahar. It's virud ahar. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Virud ahar means wrong combinations of food which react with each other and they become toxic and poisonous. But ma'am, what if like we've been having this since our childhood? Isn't it like uh, our body becomes uh, like used to that? No. no. Okay. If I squeeze a lemon into milk. Yeah. Be it in West Bengal or Tamil Nadu or Rajasthan or Europe. Yeah, yeah. Take right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the nature of the food hasn't changed just because you've been mm -hmm. eating since childhood you have learned how to ignore the symptoms it is probably reacting inside your body but you've learned how not to notice it okay so what it's doing is you are ignoring the signs but it's still collecting ama or poison inside your body toxins inside your body slowly and it leads to damages in the organ in the long run okay Yeah. Okay. And now for the lunch, like we talked about breakfast, and I, now for the lunch. Lunch. Okay. I hope everybody is making notes. As someone just said, you know, please slow down. I'm taking notes. Don't worry. I'm sure Ruchika will save the life. You can always go. Yeah, back. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can check it afterwards. Okay. So breakfast can be sweet or savory, and it has to always be a single grain. Don't do this. You know, king's platter. Like you know, when we go to a five star restaurant, we have this buffet breakfast. What do we do? We take everything onto our plate. Fruits we lelia, all the jams, all the masala dosas and bada and uh, uh, idli and the chola batura and the kulchas also. Yeah. We exactly made a mess out of our plate. Now, if I put mm. all this food in a blender, everything that you've taken, all the sweets, the desserts, the chocolates, the uh, milk, the cereals, the dosas, if I put it in a blender and give it to you, will you eat it? You won't. No. Eat all of it. Yeah. Then why would you put it inside your stomach? Yeah. Make sense. If you're not willing to, yeah, yeah. why do you want to torture your stomach with that? Just because your stomach can't talk to you, we can't torture it, na? No? Yeah, that's right. Single, single ahar, one ahar, khana chahiye. Okay. Okay. Breakfast ho gaya. Uske baad lunch. Ah, uh, lunch me kya kare? Pehle 12 baje. 
when you know the sun is at the peak have salad steam salads okay what salads do carrot and cucumber alkalizes the stomach and cancer cannot exist in an environment that's alkaline okay now, fruits alkalizes cucumber and carrot alkalizes the stomach there are two more magic ingredients from mother nature it is coconut water and lemon water right so early in the morning when you wake up the first thing that you should take in your stomach empty is hot water with ghee if you have constipation issues or dehydration issues or if you're vata prakriti or plain hot okay. water if you're a normal <clears throat> kapha pitta prakriti can you hear me? okay me and yeah yeah uh i just had cold but that's why my throat is catching okay besides that you can have uh you can have nariyal pani early in the morning and please stomach tender coconut water with the malai you know the soft meat that comes with the nariyal pani you must eat yeah, that yeah 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 so when you drink coconut water because that okay so it's food so it's recommended for all like uh, three prakritis vata pitta and kapha you just talking about vata for coconut water so vata prakriti i recommend hot water with ghee to di- you know lubricate the digestive tract because the koshta is very dry hard and rough which causes chronic constipation right and the skin yeah. is also very dry and rough because it gets dehydrated very quickly so they can have warm water with ghee after that they can have nariyal pani coconut water with some lemon squeezed in it because vata okay. prakriti is bitter astringent and pungent in nature they can have yeah. sweet sour salty so they had hot okay. water with ghee and after that they have tender coconut water with little lemon squeezed in it okay that's excellent for alkalizing the system pitta now pitta if pitta is very high and if it's out of control it's causing a lot of hyperacidity acid reflux burning sensation indigestion pimples acne what should pitta do they can have warm water with ghee or they can have sabja seeds you know sabja seeds which we so overnight they start swelling up in the morning they look like tiny oyster eggs yeah 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 get it soak 1 teaspoon sabja seeds overnight and next morning drink that water with the sabja seeds either warm okay. water with ghee or sabja seed water if your pitta is high what does it do sabja seed water brings your pitta back into balance warm water with ghee also helps in bringing the pitta or the fire into balance after that pitta prakriti can have just nariyal pani tender coconut water no lemon in it because pitta is already sour salty and pungent in taste yeah 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 so we should not have sour empty stomach which is lemon okay yeah? third is kapha prakriti now kapha prakriti sweet sour salty in taste already so they should do the opposite which is bitter astringent and pungent their thing is very simple take 200 ml of warm water with some lemon squeezed in okay that is great for kapha prakriti because warm water helps in stimulating the agni lemon also helps in stimulating digestion okay not have tender coconut water they should not have ghee empty stomach they should not have sabja seeds also empty stomach because coconut water is cooling and good fat which kapha doesn't need because kapha has a very low metabolic fire agni yeah kapha prakriti they should right. not have a uh, ghee because it's good fat that they don't need they tend to put on weight easily they struggle to lose weight their endomorph body type mm-hmm. correct what yeah. kapha can do instead is have warm warm water with ghee uh, with lemon in it like with vata and pitta we get two recipes each so kapha can have warm water with lemon squeezed in it and after that they can have one teaspoon of honey half teaspoon of grated ginger a pinch of pepper a pinch of turmeric and a pinch of cinnamon okay what does it do honey is heaty and antibacterial it's great for bronchial health and kapha prakriti tend to have imbalances in the top part of the body like cold cough sinus allergies asthma wheezing hay fever and such lung congestion honey helps in preventing bronchial disorders okay ginger is anti inflammatory again hmm so pepper turmeric is also anti inflammatory antibacterial antiviral what does it do it also helps in stimulating the agni because they are all pitta in nature they are all heaty in nature they all have fire element and they will also help in breaking down stubborn fat and dissolving fat and losing weight which kapha prakriti okay. stumbles right right make sense okay yeah yeah totally 
So kaffa, so warm water with lemon and the honey, ginger, pepper, turmeric, cinnamon recipe. Pitta had two recipes: warm water with ghee or nariyal pani, which is tender coconut water with no lemon squeeze in it. Bata had yeah. warm water with ghee and tender coconut water with lemon squeeze in it. Both are good for it. Right, right. Okay. And uh, yeah, we talked about uh, uh, breakfast and lunch, and uh, now we'll talk about dinner. Yes. Uh, before we go to dinner, lunch, there was one more thing. We said steam salads, carrot, yeah, beet, uh, carrot and cucumber both help in alkalizing the stomach. So you see how we alkalize the stomach in the morning first, and then we had fruits. Same thing in the afternoon, we alkalize the stomach first with vegetables, a draw sa- uh, uh, steam salads, and then we have lunch. Now lunch, na, has to be uh, different for each of us. In the sense, yeah, it can be the same food cooked for the whole family. People say, you know, we're all different prakriti. How can I cook different food for everyone? Mm-hmm. You don't have to cook different food, right. but you can do portion control. Kafa should eat half plate vegetables, quarter plate carbs, and quarter plate protein. Half plate okay. vegetables. All kinds of vegetables are good for kafa. Quarter plate carbs, quarter plate protein. Carbs. What are the carbs they can eat? Kafa should not eat wheat, rice, pasta, maida. They should not eat this. Kafa can have millets. Like jawar, bajra, makai, amaranth, rajgira, ragi, they're all very good for kapha protein. Okay. Quarter plate proteins. So they can have any dal, tur dal, chane ki dal, masur ki dal and all of that. Half plate vegetables, quarter plate carbs, quarter plate protein. Pitta should have one third plate carbs, one third plate protein and one third plate vegetables. Okay. So pitta right. should have... Uh, they can have most of the proteins unless they are lactose intolerant. They can have even paneer. They can have most of the vegetables except spicy vegetables like capsicum, radish, onion, garlic, chilies. Okay. And in carbs, they can have whole wheat pasta, whole wheat chapati, rice. They can have uh, 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 some of the millets, not all, because some millets are heaty. Like jawar bajra is very heaty, so it's not good for pitta. But they should not have maida. That's for pitta. Okay. Vata right. should have half plate carbs, quarter plate protein, quarter plate vegetables, right? Vata has Vishama Agni, irregular metabolism. Pitta yeah, has yeah, irregular yeah. Agni, sharp metabolism. And Kapha has Manda Agni, which is low metabolism. Metabolism, yeah. We should try to bring all three doshas to a state of three dosha balance or Sama Agni. Sama Agnisha, Sama Dosha, Sama Dhatu, Kaya. Mala Kriyaya. Right? Yeah, right. So the aim is to bring our meal, eat our meal in such a way that our Agni becomes Sama Agni. So Vata should have half plate carbs. They can have a lot of rice. They can have a lot of whole wheat, Rajgira, Amaranth, Ragi, some amount of millets, Jawar Bajra Makhai, but not too much because it's very difficult for them to digest something so dry. Hmm. Then right. they can have lots of ghee. Vata can have two to three teaspoons of ghee. Per day. Mm-hmm. I can have two teaspoons of ghee to keep the fire under control. And bath, kapha should have only one teaspoon of ghee per day. So you can add ghee to your lunch. After lunch, it is good to have a post-digestive drink to aid in stimulating digestion. Because lunch is the biggest meal. If you can help your mm-hmm. stomach, it's even better. The stomach will thank you for doing half the job. Chew your food 32 times. And then let the saliva also go to the stomach so that the stomach will thank you saying that, okay, you've done half my work. Mm. And Post lunch, you can have buttermilk, uh, you know, with a tadka in it. You can, you know, make a ghee ka tadka. You can put hing, asafoetida in it, little curry leaves, ginger, chili, uh, cumin powder, mustard seeds, pink salt, then garnish with cilantro on your buttermilk. A uh, spiced buttermilk is shadarasa and taste. It's sweet, sour, salty, bitter, astringent, pungent. It is three dosha in nature. It's suitable for all three body types. Having a small okay. glass of buttermilk post lunch is advisable. It aids digestion. What do we do if you don't like buttermilk or if you're lactose intolerant? You can still have buttermilk actually because you know the uh, yogurt leaves the milk solids behind. Okay. Right? But if you still feel yogurt and buttermilk is not your cup of tea and especially for a kapha prakriti, you can have black coffee. One shot. So you know the French okay. the yogurt, love to have black coffee as one shot because it aids in digestion. Mm-hmm. Right. Iske baad, what do we do? Uh, evening, 4 o'clock snack we're going to start getting hungry now what will we do we yeah samosa kachori chips and all the junk food and chocolates not a good idea right what do we do 
we can either have a handful of nuts but nuts is best had in the morning because nuts take 16 hours to get digested 18 hours okay okay nuts now to get digested 6 hours in the stomach 6 hours in the small intestine 6 hours in the large intestine so nuts is best consumed early in the morning right have a tendency of eating nuts as a snack in the evening instead i advise eating fruits that are soft like papaya sitafal which is custard apple chiku mm. which is good apple grapes mm-hmm. or even pomegranate mm. a big bowl of pomegranate right along with the fruits you can have some tea without mm. milk why because milk reacts with the fruit so what tea can you have you can have a metabolism tea with cinnamon cardamom clove grated ginger pepper star anise little turmeric little lemon squeezed in it don't put milk in it when you're having fruits mm. so you have right. a big bowl of fruits and a small tea at 4 o'clock mm-hmm. then what do we do okay for dinner again the rule is eat 80% of your appetite be it breakfast lunch okay. or dinner your stomach should be one third solids one third liquid moisture and one third should be air and digestive juices mm-hmm. 75 to 80% of your stomach can be full leave the remaining 20% right so what can you eat you can have a big bowl of vegetable soup why okay. because we had fruits twice a day we had fruits at 8 in the morning and we had fruits at 4 yeah. in the evening we had vegetable right. salad Twelve in the afternoon. Now a vegetable soup at seven in the evening. So we're having vegetables twice a day, fruits twice a day. It balances. So, ma'am, like as you said, that uh, uh, vegetables are kind of um, difficult to digest, right? So, wouldn't it be uh, difficult at night? Yeah. That's why we're doing vegetable soup. It's better not to eat whole wheat chapati and sabji at night. It's not easy to digest. What should you eat for dinner? you should have a big bowl of vegetable soup that has been strained well cooked well in a pressure cooker it has broken down the complex vegetables and you're getting the juice you're getting the fiber and you add a lot of yeah. spices to it like pepper pink salt cumin powder moringa powder mm-hmm. if you like make it nice and rich the vegetable soup okay but make it thin yeah fill your stomach up with vegetable soup half your stomach your appetite will go down after that what do you eat eat only if you're hungry otherwise don't eat dinner if you're okay. still hungry you can eat for dinner again a single dish don't eat don't have vegetables for dinner because you've already had vegetable soup you can have moong dal khichdi for dinner it's the best dinner you can have dal chawal which is dal rice with little ghee like moong dal tur dal chane ki dal uh, you can have uh, just one dish like an upma or an idli or a dosa or you can have moong dal chilra have only one dish for dinner Okay. Only complex food, but if you're trying to lose weight, following soup, you can also have a bowl of steam salads. If you have a lot of stubborn okay. belly fat, steam salads is also a great way of breaking the stubborn fat. But vegetables, like you said, are difficult to digest, so never eat mm. raw salads. Okay. Tamru. Okay. Right. And I, right. And never eat fruits after four o'clock because fruits activate your system and they wake you up. One apple is okay. equal to one cup of coffee, so never eat fruits after four o'clock. Right, right. So, ma'am, what if we feel hungry after we have like dinner? As you said, that we should have dinner before, like, ah, uh, before ah uh, sun has been set, right? So it's yeah. been like ah uh, six to seven o'clock, maybe. So, like, if we feel hungry or if we have to stay late at night or whatever, so, and we feel hungry, so what should we eat? Okay. this will happen to a lot of people suddenly at 10 11 in the night they will be like chue the order fate mein i want to yeah. eat something yeah the solid food should be consumed 3 to 4 hours before going to bed correct so say if you sleep by 10 o'clock your dinner should be over by 7 o'clock yeah next 3 hours to get digested you must fully digest your food before you go to sleep correct okay now we will get hungry right the best thing to have at bedtime is a glass of milk it okay. can be dairy based or vegan it can be cow's milk goat's milk or it can be almond milk oat milk or uh, what is the other milk that we have coconut milk but it should never be soya milk okay why why uh, not soya, soya milk. milk soya milk is made with man made intervention it's not na- natural it's not found in nature it has yeah, no yeah, yeah. enzymes in it so it actually stresses your gut out and can cause kapha imbalances Okay. Okay, so never have soya milk for dinner. 
in fact never have soya milk in your diet soya milk tofu all of this is a very bad um, you know man made food items which are not natural at all so it's right, right. coconut milk almond milk uh, oats milk or cow's milk in this at night make sure it's warm it's boiled well and it's warm at bedtime this will help you sleep well now milk is also very heavy food in ayurveda it takes 18 hours to get digested when you drink milk at night you go to sleep for next 8 10 hours you sleep really well you go into a deep rem sleep the body is able to absorb all the nutrition from the milk ice cream is a strict no <laughs> ever <laughs> because what yes, somebody asked you. is ice cream reduces your agni your agni is your source of life why would you reduce your source of life hmm. right correct so what do you do at bed time you can have milk and you can have milk with uh, uh you can have milk with turmeric if you have body pain aches you want to boost your immunity or your metabolism have milk with turmeric then you can have milk with ghee if you have constipation issues you can also have milk oh. half milk half water with a pinch of nutmeg boiled well at bed time this helps in improving your sleep okay this is also excellent right right okay so these are the things you eat at bed time to help you sleep better okay can we have coffee coffee at night strict no, no. assume okay i am mean not audible or max yeah sorry i think i just broke the connection broke for a second coffee should never be consumed after 4 o'clock in the evening because it affects your sleep patterns there are some people okay. who drink the coffee and they still able to sleep that's they've just become immune to the effect of caffeine hmm which right. is not good you need to be sensitive to all the food items and drinks that you have because that helps you understand what is right what is wrong for your body you can't become immune to everything hmm. you should be immune to bacteria and viruses but not to food Right, right. And so, ma'am, ask- how does? The- yeah, Sorry. ma'am. Was saying- yeah, I was just asking that how does this intermittent fasting actually like works? Like, what's the process? So, for a kapha prakriti, now intermittent fasting is not the same for all three body types. It should be different for all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma'am, are you there? Not audible. Hello. No, 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 no. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Got it. So, a kapha prakriti intermittent fasting is not the same for all body types. It is different for all body types. A kapha prakriti should do intermittent fasting yeah. for about sixteen uh, hours. They should stop eating at six o'clock in the evening. Next morning. they should start eating after 10 o'clock in the morning okay full kapha prakriti kapha prakriti has manda agni they have very low metabolic fire so the longer they do right. intermittent fasting the faster they lose weight they're an endomorph body type they tend to be very thick yeah. they put on weight easily and they struggle to lose weight right right the second is mesomorph body type which is pitta prakriti they tend to put on weight easily they lose weight easily they must do intermittent fasting only for 14 hours Okay. Okay. They tend to get hungry very quickly. They tend to have hunger pangs, which gives them headaches. Okay. Then yeah. vata. They should do intermittent fasting only for twelve hours. Okay. Stop eating at seven o'clock and start eating at seven o'clock in the morning again because the body is very dry and rough. They need to eat continuously to keep the body moisturized. Right. 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 Okay, so ma'am, mm-hmm. last question I would like to ask, and then we'll take some questions. Uh, so the last question is like, is intermittent fasting a healthy way to lose weight? Definitely. Every okay. person who intermittent fasting, whether they're trying to lose weight or not, intermittent fasting basically means giving a break to your body for ten to twelve hours every right. single day, so that it can restore all the organs back to good health at night, repair all the damaged tissues, muscles, and nerves at night. right right so everybody should do intermittent fasting whether they want to lose weight or not it is for good health it is for immunity it's for good digestion good metabolism and to improve longevity of your body if you keep abusing your body your body is going to get exhausted right right it's like a machine it's like a car like you're not going to exhaust it right you have to give it a break right 
the same rule applies to your body okay so ma'am we'll take some questions now i guess we've like couple of questions people were asking uh you can also check if you feel like answering some you can uh can we add sugar in milk mm-hmm. uh, charming desert road yes i'll tell you which sugar to use kadi shakkar is called misri in ayurveda kadi shakkar is cooling in nature it's better to have kadi shakkar add one cardamom cardamom is heaty because it has essential oil in it so you can have kadi shakkar in your milk you can even have jaggery if you like or brown sugar but never refined sugar because refined sugar is more addictive than drugs and it causes what is called leaky gut syndrome it causes holes in your gut it ruptures your gut lining uh should i have milk and night cow's milk if i want to lose weight if you're trying to lose weight no cow's milk no vegan milk also you have to remove dairy from your diet completely because dairy has good fat hmm. uh ma'am there is this question apple cider vinegar is it uh, apple cider vinegar is good for weight loss yes apple cider vinegar is good for weight loss you can dissolve it in a glass of warm water and have it early in the morning empty stomach but again who should have apple cider vinegar only a kapha prakriti not a pitta vata prakriti because it causes burning sensation or vata imbalances right uh, there is this question how to know that which uh, which is our body type so you can go on our website called www.pranabydimplejangda.com there's a dosha quiz you can enter the dosha quiz and find out what body type you are it's a very basic quiz it uh, will ask you 15 questions and you can give the answers to that besides that you can always do a consultation with an ayurvedic doctor you must do it at least once in a lifetime to find out what your dosha your prakriti is reason being just like how your blood group is fixed at the time of creation your prakriti is also fixed at the time of creation you know what your blood group is so you should also know what your ayurvedic body type is because that gives you information on what kind of food to put inside this body if you're o positive you will get o positive blood transfusion only you will not get ab positive or ab negative so if you're a pitta prakriti you can only eat pitta pacifying foods you can't eat pitta aggravating foods so what food is mm. good for you is not good for me what food is good for me is not good for you you must eat based on a prakriti right so, definitely find out what your dosha is uh oh riya batia has got a question what should vata not include in their diet shall we answer that yeah yes ma'am sure sure so vata i was just checking the comments yeah is yeah. air and space okay vata prakriti is already made of air and space they must not have vegetables and fruits that are dominant in air and space for example uh bitter foods is made of uh, air and space astringent foods is made of air and space pungent foods is made of fire and air right so pungent foods are foods like capsicum radish onion garlic chilies they are fire and air uh bitter foods which is made of air and space is basically foods like fenugreek bitter gourd which is karela uh then uh, celery cilantro uh then what else is bitter uh, pomegranate is also bitter slightly these are bitter foods astringent foods are foods that dry up the moisture in your mouth and dry up the water retention in your body they are like berries cherries strawberries pomegranate raw banana green apple red apple raw fruits basically are astringent so vata should not have astringent fruits instead they should have cooked fruits or apple stew seed hmm. stew pear stew you know stew it with a little cinnamon pepper honey uh then they should not have a uh, bitter and uh, pungent foods instead they should have foods that are sweet sour and salty in taste hmm ma'am there is this question what if we have like uh, two doshas equally like if they are like dual dosha yes dual dosha body type is a little difficult to treat because sometimes they conflict each other for example kapha vata dual body type kapha is earth and water vata is air and space kapha is endomorph body type they tend to be thick with thick bones and vata is thin body type ectomorph body type right so in that case kapha and vata prakriti the conflict so it's a little difficult to treat kapha vata prakriti what do we do in dual body types you focus on the third dosha which is less in your body so if i'm kapha and vata i will focus on eating more pitta aggravating foods to increase my pitta so that kapha and vata goes down right if you're a pitta vata prakriti you'll focus on eating more kapha rich foods to bring your pitta and vata down if you're a uh, kapha pitta prakriti you focus on eating more vata aggravating foods to bring your kapha and pitta down okay so there is this question ma'am i eat satvik food still facing pimples on cheeks and forehead okay 
uh, you could be eating sattvic foods, but then probably your pitta prakriti. Replace oil with ghee in your diet. Ghee will help in bringing the heat of the body down. Do not have spicy foods at all in your diet, which means even capsicum, radish, onion, garlic. Any foods that are energetically heaty, that's two. Number three, you might want to take medicines like neem, philanthus neruri, amla, and such to help in purifying the blood because your blood is toxic, which is causing pimples and acne. Externally, you can take one drop of neem tree neem oil and one drop of tea tree oil and apply it directly on the pimples and acne to. kill all the bacteria you must maintain good hygiene a good skin care regime of cleansing your face scrubbing moisturizing your face every night you must have a very strict skin care regime so this is what you do despite having a sattvic diet you must have other elements in your diet uh, uh, uh ma'am is it better to avoid onion and garlic as it is said in sattvic diet so you know onion and garlic has a role to play we should not do away with all foods onion and garlic onion and garlic are tamasic in nature they create tamas in the body but we need to balance sattvic rajasic and tamasic foods in our diet to keep our body in a state of balance sattvic food allows you to nurture good emotions like kindness compassion empathy love forgiveness and such rajasic food allows you to nurture emotions like ambition uh, you know the desire to achieve something desire to grow leadership qualities the ability to uh, you know uh, communicate very well you know uh, leadership skills uh, oratory skills communication skills that comes from pitta rajasic foods tamasic foods creates greed and lust and uh, obesity and uh, uh, even you know laziness gluttony and negative emotions like that but if you just keep having sattvic and rajasic foods you'll always need running you need to have a little tamasic foods to slow you down once in a while onion and garlic right. are also for boosting immunity they also help in killing mm-hmm. bacteria especially onion is great you know if you just take a slice of onion put it on the bottom of your foot and wear a socks it completely cures fever it pulls all the bacteria out of the the the, the heat and the uh, fever the viral fever out through your foot the onion turns black garlic is excellent for patients who are fighting with cholesterol it brings the cholesterol back to normal so you must eat food right. based on your prakriti Okay, right. So there is one more question. Can neem wait? Can we eat neem leaves daily, like five to six leaves? Sorry. There is this question that can we eat eight to ten leaves daily, like neem leaves? Ah, uh, not daily. I'll tell you why. Neem is anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antiviral, anti-fungal, uh, anti-spasmodic. anti spermicidal also for a man it can reduce the sperm count in the long run so you do not take neem every day for a woman it can cause a lot of heat because it is extremely potent and it was used for causing miscarriage back in the day for causing abortions back in the day so you cannot have neem every day you can have it for 15 days take a break then again take it for 15 days to boost your immunity against covid-19 and all kinds of bacteria and viruses that is there in the air but not every day okay So, ma'am, can you see some questions? Actually, I, I'm not able to go like uh, upwards. Okay. I can't Someone, see initial questions. Yeah, someone's yeah. asking, can we have soya bean once in a week? Uh, Balwani, Balwani Simran, no, I don't recommend it at all. But if it's just a temptation, it's fine. I would advise you to slowly wean off soya products. It's not healthy. Uh, Shilpa Surana, why not soya? Because soya is made with man-made intervention. It doesn't exist in nature. It has no bacterial enzymes, so it's not easy to digest. Uh, Charming Desert Rose, can I have conflicts with milk at night? Uh, <laughs> you can, if you don't have the energy to cook food. Ideally, I would prefer if you have some well-cooked food for dinner, like you know, um, a well-cooked soup or khichdi. or dal chawal it's always good to have something well cooked not just conflicts and milk that's good for breakfast cashew milk leandra cashew milk is too fatty it can cause cholesterol issues cashew is not suitable for everyone it's okay to have three to four cashews per day but if you're going to drink a milk a whole glass of milk out of it it's going to be a lot of good fat which you don't need it might cause a lot of obesity weight gain and cholesterol issues uh milk ice cream is okay sandeepan no except for kulfi once in a while i don't Uh, suggest milk at all uh, ice cream at all because it, it, uh, it uh, uh, you know weakens your agni and your agni needs to be strong at all time that's your source of life sandeepan maggi maggi is a strict no no it takes <laughs> 72 it takes several days for you to digest maggi by the way look at the shelf life 
the maggie has not started disintegrating inside a plastic cover if i bury maggie under earth and come back after 6 months i'll still find the maggie there what does that say maggie is not right easy. and when maggie was banned let me tell you something do you know where did all the maggie go that was produced it was given to a road manufacturing company which mixed it with granite with with the uh, the uh, material that they use for building roads and they crushed it and used it for building roads so can you imagine how strong maggie is that they could build roads from it so please don't have maggie or any brand of uh, you know noodles unless it's like you know homemade right okay and then what else is there i see uh, An- anush pant saying you're right ma'am she's put in a lot of fruits thank you uh charming there's a road can we add dal in the soup should we add salt yes you can add dal in the soup once in a while it's a great source of protein in fact it becomes a sambar or a karkolam in south india where they put dal and vegetables together and make a porridge you can mm-hmm. add salt right. that's really great uh then what else is there black tea anushpan black tea is great uh just go easy on the caffeine and don't mix honey in your black tea coffees cookies cakes because honey becomes poisonous you must have learned this in ayurveda honey is medicine not food do not cook it mm-hmm. okay right right and what else is there is it all right to have white tea or black tea instead of coffee mridula vinod okay that's my classmate from school hi mridula nice to see you uh you can have tea instead of coffee post lunch i'm assuming you're asking uh but i prefer that you have black tea not with milk because milk is going to react with the food you've eaten and that could become toxic and can lead to accumulation of ama or poison inside the body so you can have either black coffee or black tea coffee and everybody is just saying please space uh, save the live as ig are you uh and dinner options already answered what if you're a, co- a combination of pitta and kapha answered please save the live sandeepan yes we will so everybody is just saying please save the live <laughs> Yes, we'll save the life. Uh, there is somebody asking healthy substitute for Maggie. There's no healthy substitute. I'm sorry. <laughs> homemade, homemade sevaya vermicelli. You know the Indian vermicelli is called sevaya in India. That's your Indian right. Maggie. That's your desi Maggie. Eat as much of it as you want. Uh, is maida bad for you to consume once in a while? Once in a while, it's okay, but it is unhealthy because it causes leaky gut syndrome. It causes holes in the gut. It's not easy to digest. Meda-based pizzas, meda-based burgers, meda-based Maggie, all of this are unhealthy. Right. So yes, we've answered a lot of questions. We would be very yes, happy ma'am. to do a live again with Ruchika. I find Ruchika very um, enlightened as an Ayurvedic student, and we seem to have a lot of scope, a lot of potential, a lot of promise. I must say. I can see a promising Thank career you. ahead of you, and I wish you all the very best, Ruchika. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, I would like to ask you one question. It's very personal from my side. Uh, why did you choose Ayurveda? Like, what attracted you towards it? Like, where did you find Ayurveda from? Like, uh, like how? To be honest, Ayurveda chose me. I didn't choose Ayurveda. I was a happy investment banker before this. I was a TV producer before this, TV reporter uh, before that, a copywriter and advertising before that. I thought I was living a good life, but I just felt like something was missing in my life in the sense I couldn't uh, see what impact I was creating in the lives of other people. With Ayurveda, I'm able to give back to the society. I wanted to basically invest in a business that will allow me to preserve a piece of heritage. for our future generations and uh, at the same time cause no harm to the planet make money but still not cause harm to the planet make it a sustainable business where we can pay off salaries and rents and not become like an ngo not become like you know profit or a non-profit organization that's waiting for funds or donations or charity that shouldn't happen it had to be a sustainable business that can take care of people give back to the society and at the same time cause no harm to the nature there should be no plastic involved there is some amount of plastic involved because some medicines are not easy to package in glass we're still trying to come out with solutions for that there should be no non veg involved so our clinic has only plant based ayurvedic medicines we do not have any of those non veg medicines that ayurveda sometimes has uh there should be no uh, what do you call uh butchering of uh, animals or slaughter of animals there should be no cutting of trees excessively we have one pathi table which is made from a neem tree but we're going to make sure that we're going to invest back in nature and grow a lot of plants and saplings so to be honest ayurveda chose me 
and it has been a journey that has been the most gratifying and fulfilling journey of my life right okay ma'am thank you so much uh, i was like it was really nice to have a live with you and i am so like thank you so much for yeah thank you so much it was a pleasure talking to you ruchika i wish you all the very best and i'll be very happy to see you at the clinic whenever you come to bandra mumbai we'll be happy to host you thank you sure ma'am so thank you ma'am okay right. guys we like uh, okay i'll just end the live okay ma'am bye i'll just bye. end the live same here ma'am same here